Welcome to another edition of SDS YouTube. It's our video blog exclusively on MidcoSN.com, promoting Jackrabbit Journal. I'm David Brown, along with the host with the most with Jackrabbit Journal, Thomas Wilfred, as we've established. Wilfred is your middle name. Thomas Wilfred Neiman. And Tommy, Jacks get their first win of the year, 44 to 18 over Cal Poly here at Coughlin Alumni Stadium. Uh, the first half was a little so-so, but the second half, the defense really opened things up. Yeah, you knew that uh, Cal Poly was going to come out and put up some yards and probably some points, but um, Coach Stigemeyer told us today that they held Cal Poly to fewer rushing yards than New Mexico State did in the opening week, and it was 16 to 12. Jacks had the lead at halftime. Should have had a shutout in the second half. Uh, the Jacks should, but they gave up that big play. Uh, they win 89 yards, and then they had Cal Poly had a one-yard touchdown run after that. But defensively, yes, I thought uh, after the first half, and really after the first quarter and a half, that the Jacks figured it out defensively against that crazy option where they can do so many things with the football. And Cal Poly came out and threw it more than South Dakota State was expecting. But defensively, uh, South Dakota State played a very solid game. They gave up like 440 yards, but only 18 points uh, to a pretty good offensive team. And one of the guys who start on defense in that game was Jake Gentile, a guy who lost his starting spot at safety this week, but uh, Coach Stig praised him for responding to the challenge. Yeah, they just uh, they put another guy in front of him just to start the game, but Gentile uh, was flying all over the field. He looked as fast as ever. He was coming up on blitzes and making tackles and making tackles in the open field. So you just love that as a coach and as a program where you can say to a kid, we don't think you're doing what we, uh, we want you to do yet. We're going to challenge you, and he really uh, responded to the challenge. Switching things over to the offensive side of the ball, Zach Lujan got his first actual start in a game. Of course, he came in relief of Austin Sumner during last week's game at Mizzou. Did some nice things, had a couple of touchdown passes. He also threw a bad interception and got sacked and nearly fumbled in his own red zone. But uh, what would you assess, or how would you assess Lujan's performance? I mean, he's, he's still a fresh, or a sophomore. He's coming from a JUCO last year. This was his first start as an FCS quarterback. And uh, I mean, he doesn't throw the prettiest ball all the time, but his receivers made him look good on the touchdowns to Schneider and to Winicky. Uh, some big six foot five receivers that are making him, uh, making it a little easier on Lujan right now. But Lujan was good. He made some good decisions. Had the one bad interception. That was about the only bad throw he made. But um, you got to give him credit. He's he played well in front of uh, over 12,000 fans here in his first start, and I, I thought he played pretty well. And of course, we all know the straw that stirs the offense for South Dakota State, and that's Zach Center, who sets the Missouri Valley Conference record in all-time career rushing during the game. And of course, after the game, like his usual self, he deflected the individual accolades, says it's all about the team. He was happy to get the win, but what does it mean with? 10 games to go that he has the yeah. conference's all-time rushing record. Yeah, it means he's going to set it out there in ways where maybe nobody's ever going to get it. But as you said, he says after the game, yeah, it was a great record, happy to have it, and glad we won the game. And he gives all credit. He's honestly humbled that way. And uh, as Coach Stig said, it's credit to the, the linemen, the offensive line this year. The in the first guys. couple of games, the fat guys, a lot of new guys up there doing a great job. And he's, as Coach Stig says, they really want to do their job well so that Zenner can do what he does. And uh, Zach sets a new Missouri Valley Conference record that is going to be sky high by the time he's done. On to next week, and they face Southern Utah, another big sky team. They're 0-2 so far. They lost at Nevada, and they lost to another FCS foe that South Dakota State's familiar with, and that's southeastern Louisiana. Stig sort of talked about their Star Wars type of offense, I guess, a little bit. What, what does he mean by that? What, what does Southern Utah bring? I'm not sure what he means by that. He said it was a communist offense, or it's not a communist offense. There's some of those, like Cal Poly, where they'll just spread it out and do a bunch of crazy things. He said Southern Utah will spread it out, but then it's kind of a base offense from there. So they don't do a lot of weird things. So we'll see how that comes out. But uh, Southeastern Louisiana and uh, McNeese State, those teams down there in that conference in the uh, south part of the country are really good right now. So I don't know what you can tell from Southeastern Louisiana beating up on Southern Utah last week. But we'll see. Uh, Jax, I, you know, you get the feeling that they should go down there, take care of business, get another win. They get Wisconsin Oshkosh back here the week after that. Should probably be 3-1 and one going into the bye week and then going into uh, Missouri Valley Conference play. And that's why they play the games. We will see if they do as Tom predicts and go three and one by the time on the bye week. He says bank it. Bank it. You heard it right here. He's banking it. He's guaranteeing two wins in the next two weeks. But either way, we'll have complete highlights and reaction from the Cal Poly game on Jackrabbit Journal this Wednesday at 8 o'clock only on Midco Sports Network. For Tom Neiman, I'm David Brown. We'll see you next time.